Chris Maddox with a crossover alongside Howard Beck and Ben Pickman. Guys, Oklahoma City won in Boston last week, snapping a 14-game losing streak. They followed that up with a 57-point home loss to the banged-up Indiana Pacers. There's no doubt that the Thunder are tanking right now. But, Howard, should the NBA have a problem with it? I'm sure that philosophically, yes, the NBA has a problem with it because they've gone to great lengths in recent years to try to discourage tanking. The flattened lottery odds, the play-in tournament to an extent is an anti-tanking measure. And here the Thunder are flouting all of it, and fairly flagrantly so. You know, Sitting Al Horford a couple months ago, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, the injury I'm sure is legit, but people around the league feel like they're taking the ultra-conservative approach intentionally, sitting Lou Dort no every time. It is no longer legit. I'm jumping in here. You can keep going, but it is no longer <laughs> legit. Plantar fasciitis doesn't cost this much time for Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Continue. I, I, I defer to your knowledge, Dr. Mannix. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I, it, it's suspicious at the least. We all can agree on that. So, yes, are the Thunder maneuvering intentionally here to try to not win. I don't want to say they're trying to lose, but are they not making every effort to win? I think that's pretty clear. Is this tanking? Yes, that is also pretty clear. But I would also say they're the only team that really is making an all-out effort in that direction this season. That is still progress. You know, I wrote recently the tanking era is over. It doesn't mean tanking is over. It just means that we don't have the widespread race to the bottom that we had before. The Thunder do have incentive right now to try to... Uh, eke up the standings or down the standings, however you want to look at it, to uh, for, for lottery ball purposes, and they're doing it. I have no doubt that the league is unhappy about it. I just don't know that there's much more you can do about it. You can't dictate to teams who they play or when they play them. Right, unless you want to change up the whole system entirely and, you know, create a lottery tournament or throw out the draft or equalize draft lottery odds or something radical like that. I would think, you know, the biggest surprise for Oklahoma City this year is not even that they're tanking right now. I think it's their start of the season. The fact that they were, you know, pretty decent to open the year was one of the biggest shocks of at least the first 20, 25 games of the season. You look and down, look up and down this roster and you don't see a lot of names that I think general fans recognize, but there are some reasons for hope, I would say, if you're Oklahoma City. You know, not just amid all this losing streak, you look at some of the guys they have, Teo Maladon, was one of the best second-round picks in this, you know, reigning draft. He was a, a an anticipated prospect in Europe, and he's playing pretty well. Poku, obviously. You know, you look at Brown from the G League. He, he was one of the best players in the G League bubble. And, of course, SGA, when he was on the court for those 35 games, was more than 30, 23 points per game. So, you know, Oklahoma City, there isn't a lot the league can do unless they want to make radical change right now. But they were competitive for at least most of the year, minus these last 20, 25 games. Well, let me say this. I, the league is definitely annoyed by all this. And most specifically, they're annoyed by the decision to shut down Al Horford. I mean, Al Horford was having a resurgent season in Oklahoma City, playing much better than what we saw him play when he was in uh, Philadelphia. The second that Shea Gildas Alexander went out, that's when Oklahoma City decided to shut Al Horford down. And that is a healthy, productive player that they're sitting on the sidelines. And when I watch Oklahoma City games and God help me, I've watched way too many of them over the last couple of weeks. Like Anyone that <laughs> might play well for a stretch suddenly finds himself out of the lineup for a period of time. Like Lou Dort, you know, you sit him down. Ty Jerome, sit him down. Like they've got, like They're just playing the bare minimum. When they played Boston, Howard, and they beat Boston, they had a younger average age than the Baylor Bears. The Baylor Bears that won a national championship in college basketball were older than the group that Oklahoma City was throwing out there on the floor. Now, can the league do anything? I mean, if I'm the NBA, I'm telling them you have to at least dress Al Horford and put him out there and have him go through the paces. Um, that, that may be the only thing you can do. But, you know, you said the era of tacky is over, Howard. Maybe it is for multiple teams. But there is one team this year that is just tanking the crap out of this league. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like, the distinction I'm making is tanking is never going away, right? Unless they're going to completely change the lottery odds or dis dispense with the lottery, um, just make it a salary cap system, bid on players instead. As long as there's an incentive to be bad, there will be some tanking. When I say the tanking era is over, it's that you just, it's not widespread and it's not multiple teams coming to a season with the express purpose of trying to be bad. And to your point, the Thunder were actually pretty good for a lot of the season. One of the, the reasons it's so striking what they're doing right now is because they were good. 
And it's almost like they're trying to make up for lost time. They're, I think last I checked, tied for, I think, the fifth worst record. So clearly, there are a bunch of teams that are worse than them. The Rockets, the Timberwolves, teams that didn't necessarily even intend to be that bad. And because of that, the Thunder don't have the odds that they would like. Lose a few more, they can jump up in the, into that bottom three range where you've got much better odds of getting the number one pick or guaranteed a top four pick. So that's really the strategy here, but it's born of the fact that they overachieved early on. So it wasn't a full season tank. It's a late season pull the plug, which we've seen before, but they're really the only team doing it to this extent. I mean, yeah, like they were going to the all-star break. I think they were one of a handful of teams that had not lost three games in a row. Like they were (laughs) in contention. For that playing spot. They just decided that the top of this draft is worth the effort to go and spiral into what we're seeing today. For more, check us out over at SI.com.